Today, we're gonna go over some of the more common issues with our MIG machines. We're gonna go over some maintenance on them and how to replace the wire and consumables in them. Now, before we get too far, I want to remind those who have been in my class that we do have our Dum Dum cards. These are where you're gonna turn to a lot of the more common questions that we have throughout the class. I've even got some nice pictures here to show you what it's not supposed to look like and what it's supposed to look like when you're welding. And especially when we're going and th doing our cleanup, right, wrong, wrong, okay? Keep these in mind. They're here to prevent dum-dums, dum-dum questions. Most of the common things we have going on in here, you can check this sheet and then it'll set you on the right path. We're gonna talk about some of the internal parts and pieces. First, let's talk about this MIG gun. Before you get to grabbing hold of this gun to replace or change any parts or clean it, uh, just be cautious that it could be piping hot and we don't wanna burn ourselves. So if you just finished welding, either let it cool off or grab a glove so you can take the, this, this shield off. This shield is just a friction style shield. It's, uh, you just push it on, pull it off. The newer style guns on these 252s have a, a threaded shield nozzle and those you would actually have to twist off. I'm gonna go through and tell you the names of each one of these and their purpose. You'll need to know some of this info for the test. So first we're gonna talk about the nozzle. Its job, it's got two jobs. First being protecting the inside parts of the gun. This protects it from either grounding to the plate or you accidentally running the contact tip into the puddle. It just protects the inside parts from all the heat and, and the nature of welding. The second job this has is to funnel or direct the shielding gas. Now, the shielding gas is what protects our puddles from porosity as far as atmospheric air and whatnot. Uh, so if you allow this to get caked and spatter, like that picture I just showed you, then your shielding gas isn't gonna flow correctly. So just imagine this is your nose. If you had a whole bunch of boogers in your nose, you're gonna pick your nose and get it to where you can breathe correctly. Same thing with these nozzles. You wanna make sure that you can actually funnel the shielding gas correctly. The easiest way to clean these is with a pair of Welper MIG pliers. Um, they've got files basically on the ends of them and needle nose, so you can get inside there and, and clean those. Each one of our welding booths have one of these chained to it. If not, we have some floater pairs that are in the tool room, or you can buy and bring in your own pair. Now to clean them, I like to first run this in like that, kind of give it a good twist. That usually knocks a lot of the loose spatter out. I'll even give it a few taps to knock any of the stuff that gets settled in on the bottom. And whatever's stuck or left there, you can take the ends of the pliers and just pop it off, all right? So that is the shield slash nozzle. Next, we're gonna talk about the contact tip. This guy's changed more often than any other part on this machine. They're designed to be changed even if you never dip the contact or anything, but this, in an entry level kind of scenario in a high school, uh, these are replaced all the time. So you're gonna need to know how to take and remove these or clean them properly if you wanna be able to run the machine for all that long especially while you're, you're learning. So these Welper style pliers have got some spots cut out just for taking off contact tips. Uh, you'll have to usually snip the end of the wire so that this will slide off. Loosen it, then you can take it off with your hands. Now the solid wire we use in our shop is 035. That's the size wire we're using for our short circuit which is the majority of your welding assignments and all of your projects are gonna be done with this stuff. But when we run our flex cord, we run 045, and you'll need to change this contact tip out 
to a 045 contact tip. When you go to clean these, you can use a file to clean off some of the spatter around the ends, or if you have to replace it, you can just grab a new one out of the tool crib and make sure it's an 035 when we're running 035 wire and you can replace it. Now, when you go to thread this back on, because these are made out of really soft alloys, the threads on them are pretty fat, fragile. If you over tighten it, you'll strip the threads out and then I have to replace the contact tip and a lot of times the diffuser as well. So I'll show you how to prevent over tightening it. Slip it on and you're going to thread it on by hand. All right, then the next part's really important. Okay, you're gonna, the best way I've ever explained this and it sticks is think of the little old lady at the end of Titanic. You know, the little sweet old lady, her name's Rose. At the end of the movie, she walks out to the edge of the boat with the heart of the sea and she goes to the edge and goes, and tosses it into the ocean. So the way we tighten our, our equipment like this, that's got these fragile threads in it, we go hand tight and then rose tight. You'll take your, your pliers and you're just going to go ah, and that's it. That way you can't take it off by hand, but it is tight enough that it's not gonna strip or ruin the threads. We didn't go too far. And then when you have to change the parts, you don't have to get a pair of vice grips or anything to rip that thing off because the last guy screwed it in too tight. All right, I'll show you a clip of what I mean by that. That'll help prevent a lot of common issues as far as ruining parts and pieces to the inside of this gun. Now the contact tip, its job is to guide and direct this wire. Now the next part of this is the diffuser. You can see these little holes. That's what the shielding gas is flown through. It's what it pumps out through. So every now and then make sure that all these orifices are not plugged and then we can take that off. Same spot on the pliers and the same rule of thumb when it comes to tightening that. We'll go hand tight then rose tight. That is our diffuser. Its purpose, like I said, is to channel, or this is where the shielding gas comes out of, and it's to hold the contact tip in place. This liner is ran up against the inside of this. Now we have our insulator. Its job is to ground the nozzle so that you're not constantly sticking the end of your nozzle to your plate and getting welded, but also to hold the nozzle. Same thing with this, rose tight. Every now and then we'll have to replace these because this metal collar on the center of this gets worn out and it won't hold the nozzle too tight anymore. Uh, but these are meant to go on one way with the gasket towards the end of this little back cap, right? This back cap's what our nozzle sits against. And that's all the parts and pieces on the end of this gun. We have our insulator. It's used to ground the nozzle and hold the nozzle. Be sure you don't cross thread these when you're putting them back on. Then we'll take our diffuser, put this guy back on, start it by hand. And remember, hand tight and rose tight. Ah. Then we take our contact tip, make sure it's the right size. We're using solid wire 035 and this says 035 on it. So we can put this back on, go rose tight. Then we can replace our nozzle on the end. Just be careful when you go to shove this on. That wire's small enough, it's pretty sharp. I've had kids try to shove this on like that and then they end up stabbing themselves. So you wanna push. And if you need to give it a twist, make sure you're just going clockwise. That way you don't take the, the insulator off. All right? So that is all the parts and pieces to the inside of the gun. And so I wanted to tell you what few things happen when you hit that trigger. You'll need to know this for the test. So when you hit the trigger, three things happen. One, the wire begins to feed. Two, the wire becomes electrically charged with current. And three, you can hear that shielding gas 
it feeds the shielding gas. So those three things you're gonna need to know for the test. So one, it starts feeding the wire. Two, it charges the wire with electricity. And three, the shielding gas begins to flow out. Now be cautious when you're welding or setting your, your gun down to go quench your metal or anything, don't set it on the trigger, regardless of if you've turned that on or off. If you set it on the trigger, you're gonna feed out all this wire and it's gonna coil up. It'll eventually, or it could hit the work table, which is grounded and then it can arc and could cause some damage to whatever's around it. But it's also a waste. If you leave this on its trigger and you turn it off, like at the end of the period when we're cleaning up, then the next person who comes in and turns this on, it's going to bring up the menu and some kids don't know how to get in and out of that. So let me show you. When we're running this, if you come and the trigger's being held when you go to turn it on, it's gonna bring up some programming as far as inside the machine goes. We don't need to worry about any of that in this class, this high school setting. If we get to this point, we're just gonna run it to RES for reset, and we'll turn this from off to on, and then hit the trigger again, and that just resets the machine. If for whatever reason the machine's acting real stupid, then we will come in and reset it. But now you know if, if it shows that menu, that run 100, uh, just turn it over to RES and reset it. That way we can get back to work. Now for some internal parts. 